Hi, welcome to the 10 minute video summary of the message that was shared at Henrietta Christian Fellowship on the 31st of October, 2021. My name is Don Bolden, the pastor of the church. I'd like to take about 10 minutes and share with you some of the highlights from this morning's message, okay? So you have a place to serve God that is right in the center of God's will for your life, all right? Uh, Jesus told us this. He said, no one takes anything out of my Father's hand, okay? Uh, in, in John 10, 27 through 30, uh, he says, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give them eternal life and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hands. I and my Father are one. And when I think about, you know, that place that God has given to us, I think about it and I say, you know, we have this place right exactly uh, where, where God intended for us to be, and he has prepared us for that place. And there's a lot to learn here, okay? Second Peter uh, chapter 3, verses 1 through 2. This is now, beloved, the second letter that I am writing to you, in which I am stirring up your sincere mind by way of reminder that you should remember stirring up our minds by way of reminder that we should remember. I guess remembering is important, so, okay, that you should should remember the words spoken beforehand by the holy prophets and the commandment of our Lord and Savior spoken by your apostles. So what does it mean to stir up? Okay, it means to wake up completely. Uh, when we were traveling in Ukraine, Kurt and I uh, were sharing a hotel room and uh, w one night in the middle of the night, I woke up and I knew I was going to sneeze and I sneezed really loud and so I'm trying to restrain it, but it's still going to be loud. And, I, shoo! and Kurt was suddenly awake and he said, God bless you. Okay, and uh, you know he was suddenly wake, woke up, and this is to stir you up, to make you completely awake. Okay, and what is that mind? Okay, that he's talking about. There are a lot of words for mind. The Greeks very interested in the mind, and so the word that's being used there, there is not just superficial thoughts or even important thoughts. No, it's the deep things, way down deep inside of us, that end up becoming uh, the source of who we are and the life that we live. All right. And then it is sincere. God intends for that place to be a pure place, even when exposed to sunlight, that we look and we see that God has made it pure. All right, so to remind us to remember, what are we supposed to remember? The words of the Holy Prophets. So the Old Testament scriptures to us, all right, the the, the, the word of, of Jesus, the commandment of our Lord and Savior, the New Testament scriptures to us. Okay, and then the word of your apostles, the message uh, that God sends us through messengers, all right? And so uh, I, I make no claims of being an apostle or any such thing, nor should I, I don't think, uh, because uh, no, you know, I don't think that's something God has conferred on me. But my role as a pastor of the church is, is apostolic, okay? It is uh, to be sent on a mission by God to bring some message from God to you. And uh, sincerely, I am before the Lord asking God, please give me the word that you have for, for these people uh, for this day, all right? And so uh, to remember those things that, that are brought to us by messengers that God sends to us, and it may not always be your pastor, it may be other people that you come to believe, yeah, God has sent these people to me to speak to me for God, okay? So, but I wonder, do we remember anything anymore? You know, it's so easy to pop out that little handheld and bip, 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 and, you know, we've got the information that we want. And I think about a time when uh, Albert Einstein was asked by an associate if he could call him. He said, sure. He said, well, can I have your phone number? And Einstein reached for the phone directory to look up his own phone number. The person said, wait a minute, you don't know your own phone number? He said, why should I remember something that I can so easily look up in a book? Now, I would never think to try to answer Albert Einstein on things like the theory of relativity, but on this question, I'd like to answer him in defense of what the scripture is telling us about how important it is to remember, to remember, to remember, even things that you could look up in a book, nonetheless, to remember them for other reasons, okay? And so what is, what am I, okay, first of all, a forgotten phone number is not likely to present you uh, with danger in the event of a crisis, okay? A forgotten phone number is not likely to prevent you from availing uh, yourself of an opportunity that comes your way in a moment. Right? But things come in a moment, don't they, sometimes? And we don't have time to go looking them up in a book. And some, there's, there's a second piece to this, and that's this, that look, um, you know, that God desires to work using those things that are buried down deep in our heart, uh, you know, and so... Uh, it's, 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 they need to be exercised. You know, th those things that God wants us to remember from the scriptures and from the, what the people are, are, are that are sent to us are bringing us, uh, we're supposed to be exercising those things. I was uh, comparing this when I was in Ukraine to uh, learning Ukrainian language, you know, and I talked about, says, you know, I says, you know, I says, you know, you might, I have a very American mouth, okay? And it doesn't want to 
say some of the things that your language requires. Uh, I said, I'm going to tell you, my American mouth didn't want to say that. I says, and so I would practice and practice and practice and practice. And eventually it became something that came readily to me. And uh, and so, uh, you know, there's just these, these things that, that God desires to work in us, you know, through the things that we remember, okay? And it becomes easier to do with exercise. And, and deep calls to deep, all right? See, Psalm 42, 5 through 8, and uh, you can look that up, all right? But in there, it's talking about God communing with somebody in the midst of a crisis. And, it, and there's this deep of God, that, that God desires to communicate to something deep inside of us. If there's nothing there, if, if the, the words of the scriptures are not there, if the words that are, sent, that are given to us by those sent to us to speak to us for God are not there, you know, that's the, what God desires to speak to, something already planted in our heart that has taken root, all right? And so uh, the Holy Spirit you know, uses these things to purge us and fill us. God never purges things except that he plans to fill those things with the right things, okay? Sometimes there's things that are in us let's face it, that just aren't from God, aren't right, and they need to be pushed out, and they need to be replaced with the things of God, all right? And so, you know, this is uh, God at work in us uh, to create the new person in Christ that God desires for us to be. And so in Philippians 2.13, it says, it is God who is at work in you, both to will and to do for his good pleasure, all right? So God has prepared us for a purpose, and the Holy Spirit that God has given to us uh, is proof of this, all right? It is, it is something to remember. So 2 Corinthians 5.5, 5, now he, meaning God, who prepared us for this very purpose is God, who gave, uh, did I say that wrong? Second Corinthians 5, 5 said, now he who prepared us uh, for this very purpose is God, who gave us the spirit as a pledge. All right, so first of all, God has prepared us. God never does anything, according to my friend Costa Dair, without much costly preparation, all right? And so God is preparing us. That's good news for us, that God is preparing us for a purpose. He's given us a purpose. He's given us preparation, he's given us a purpose. And as a down payment on, on what God is doing, he has given us the Holy Spirit, but there is more. When I was in Ukraine, I, I would ch choose a child in the, in the crowd, and I'd walk up and I'd give him like a hundred hryvna, which is a small amount of money, but I'd say, you know, I'm promising you much more maybe 500 or a thousand hryvna and uh, anyways and i said so when you start to doubt or somebody questions you about whether or not you're you're going to receive this from me that you say how do you know and you see he gave me this as, as a, a way of anchoring that promise for me and so then i would give him the larger sum and i would leave it with him people are like what are you really going to give that to that child but see that was i wanted them to understand that we should be in awe of god giving to us the holy spirit all right and so there's more okay it's a down payment god's got more of his spirit spirit he tells us earnestly uh desire uh, the, the the better gifts okay so we have an ambition all right therefore it is we also have our ambition whether at home or absent to be pleasing to him second corinthians 5 9 okay so we seek honor not for ourselves okay that's bad ambition the ambition we have is to is to receive this and then be able to give uh, that, that honor and glory to god all right so what is the the relationship god is looking for with us okay i say you know it's like a bow but with a smile okay there's a lot Lots of ways to bow to, to someone greater than you. All right, one is just in subjection in, in, in being oppressed, but uh, this is not like that at all. You know, I'm bowing to one who I love. All right, and so uh, in Hosea 2.16, it will come about in that day. Uh, God is talking about a day of restoration. He declares the Lord that you will call me Ishi and no longer call me Baali. And what is he saying here? You know, the Baali, this hard master, okay? Uh, you know, and he said, you know, some marriage would be like that. He says, but the day is coming when uh, I won't need to be, nor will you look to me as, as, as a hard master. You look to me affectionately as, as a wife does to a husband that she loves. All right, so God has placed you, all right? But now God is place the members of the body okay each one of them in the body just as he desired god has a place for you that's a, over in a second corinthians or first corinthians twelve eighteen. okay he's given you a gift all right all of this was was to be at work you know in this this process is down deep inside of us that god desires to produce this new person in christ that we can serve him all right so it says that uh, uh in first corinthians 12 11 but one in the same spirit works all these things distributing to each one of you aren't getting it yet each one individually all right just as he wills so let's summarize here 
God's great investment in you is this, okay? He wants you to be fully aware of what he desires uh, to uh, to have deep down inside of you, where your life comes from and where the Holy Spirit is weaving and working, all right? He is going to work uh, in you through what the Holy Prophets, the Lord Jesus, your, your Savior, and the messenger sent to you have said. So remember, he said, remember, that's that's the key here, all right? So God is at work in you. He's preparing you. He has a purpose for you, all right? He has given you the Holy Spirit as proof, and the deep things of God are calling to deep things inside of you. And so listen, remember, uh, and, and let God do that work in you, because God has placed it in you, and God has gifted you. Now, one last thing before uh, I say uh, goodbye, and that's to say that Jesus wants to equip you, all right? There's two ways in which Jesus talks about desiring to equip you. One is in Ephesians 4. It says that Jesus, when he ascended, uh, gave gifts to men, all right, and, and it's apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. So God has people that he sends as messengers to the body of Christ that he desires to equip us through these people, all right, and we need to, to let God do his work in us through that. But uh, more intimately, I want to end with this. Jesus also will equip you himself. Over in Hebrews 13, 20 through 21, now the God of peace who brought up from the dead the great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the eternal covenant, even Jesus our Lord equip you in every good thing to do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. And with that, I'm going to say God bless you. We'll see you next time on the 10-minute video summary.